In this video, we will take a look at two glide bombs, the Soviet-era Fab 500 and the American-made JDAM smart bombs. One of the major differences is that the American weapons when attacks with a guidance tail kit converts the unguided bomb, such as the Mark 82, into smart munitions weapon. In contrast, the Fab 500 requires a guidance kit that can open its wings and fly to its target using the GLONASS Russian guidance system. The upgraded Fab 500 glide weapon costs around $24,000, while the JGAM costs approximately $36,000. We'll also take a look at the basic step-by-step -step process of how the Fab 500 glide bomb works, not to mention the operation of the American JDAM ER. All in the video ahead, so stay tuned and don't miss a beat. Let us examine the components of the glide bomb in detail. The primary structure of this weapon is substantial, with the standard model weighing approximately 500 kilograms, which translates to 1,100 pounds. There is also a variant known as the Fab 1500, which is significantly heavier with a weight of around 1.5 tons, hence the name 1500 while the word FAB means high explosive in Russian. The most crucial component of the glide bomb is the unified glide and correction module. It has probably a Russian GLONASS guidance system commonly referred to as the UMPK bomb kit, which ensures the bomb's desired trajectory and accuracy during deployment. Additionally, the tail stabilizer is an essential part of this glide weapon. It provides aerodynamic stability when dropped under gravity. Let's take a look inside this Fab 500. At the forefront of the bomb is the fuse adapter, a critical component that houses the triggering mechanism. Positioned immediately behind the fuse adapter is the auxiliary booster, which plays a vital role in the activation of the TNT bomb. Let's take a look at how the Russian Fab 500 compares with the American JDAM. The Fab 500 has a length of 2.4 meters, which translates to around 8 feet. The JGAM, when considering only the bomb itself, is approximately 7 feet 3 inches in length. Finally, the Fab 1500, one of the largest Soviet-era weapons, stands at around 9 feet high, which translates to about 2.7 meters. As you can see, an average human looks small next to this massive weapon. The Fab 1500 is so large and heavy that the Sukhoi 34 bomber can only transport two of these bombs in a single mission. In comparison, it can carry around four Fab 500 glide weapons under its wings for a single mission. The Sukhoi Su-34 NATO reporting main fullback is a Soviet-origin Russian twin-engine all-weather supersonic medium-range fighter bomber or strike aircraft. Interestingly, it has a twin-seat arrangement positioned side-by-side, -side, which is fully armored. The Su-34 typically carries around 4,000 kilograms of weapons, with a maximum capacity of 8,000 kilograms. This translates to approximately 4.5 to 8.2 tons of bombs, making it one of the most highly capable aircraft of its kind. Let's take a look at how this works in a super simplified animation. Step 1. Sukhoi fighter jets can approach a target closely, staying just outside the range of enemy air defense systems. Step 2. As soon as the pilot flips the switch, the bomb is released. The safety pin is pulled by gravity as the bomb falls. Step 3. Initially, the wing kit is upside down. Once the bomb is safely away from the fighter bomber, the wing kit slowly turns and deploys its wings, transforming the bomb into a glide weapon. This conversion gives it a range of up to 70 kilometers, which is approximately 43 miles. Step 4. The wings can make small, precise adjustments during flight, guided by the GLONASS, the Russian equivalent of GPS, directing the bomb to the pre-assigned longitude and latitude that is the designated target area. Step 5. There are various versions of the bomb, and the specifications may differ according to the model. These versions can be programmed manually to activate different modes such as Burst Mode, Delayed Mode, and Impact Mode. When set in Delayed Mode, the bomb penetrates layers of concrete. The auxiliary boosters near the tail activate before detonating inside the reinforced bunker or structure. This ensures maximum damage within the target. In addition to the delayed mode, some versions of the bomb are equipped with a proximity fuse at the back. This fuse causes the bomb to burst a few meters above the ground, though this feature is rare and only found in specific versions. Lastly, there is the impact fuse which activates upon contact. When the fuse adapter connects, the auxiliary boosters trigger the detonation of the 500 kilograms TNT payload. 
This creates a massive blast with a damage radius of 250 meters, capable of destroying reinforced concrete buildings. For larger targets, the Fab 1500 bomb has an even greater damage radius of 487 meters, making it suitable for demolishing more extensive and heavily fortified structures. Chi dams and glide bombs are usually our base on this Mark 80 series. Let's take a look inside this most common dumb weapon system. At the front is the nose fuse well, all joined by a fuse conduit. Sandwiched in the middle of this rod is the explosive filled 500 pound warhead which translates to around 227 kilograms. This channel rod is connected to a tail fuse. Just a reminder, this is an unguided low-drag general-purpose bomb, part of the United States Mark 80 series of weapons system. Let's take a look at how this works in a super simplified animation. This bomb is usually dropped from a bomber or an F-18 fighter jet. When released, it falls just like a normal dumb weapon. As stated, the bomb can be fitted with a nose fuse, a tail fuse, or both simultaneously. Upon hitting the ground, the frontal fuse activates, burning the fuse conduit from the front to the back, thus creating a huge explosion. The alternative option is using the tail fuse FMU-139. This is usually used for delayed action and is set by the pilot. When it hits the target, the weight of the bomb will penetrate the concrete surface of a building, the fuse activates, and the conduit rod which creates the 500-pound explosion after a few seconds as programmed. This can create a lot of damage considering its small $4,000 price tag. Let's delve into the process of upgrading this into a guided weapon. First, the transformation begins by removing the low-drag tail, paving the way for the installation of the guidance section. Within this new configuration, nestled inside the tail, we discover the intricacies of its guidance system. Here, the inertial guidance kit collaborates seamlessly with a military-grade global positioning unit, ensuring precise navigation towards its intended target. Alongside these components, one can find the adapter ring facilitating the attachment of the telemetry antenna, crucial for transmitting data, as well as the encryption key battery safeguarding sensitive information. Venturing deeper into its structure, we encounter the thermal batteries vital for powering the system and the composite fins strategically positioned to aid in directing the missile towards its objective. These fins, meticulously controlled by gears within, maneuver with precision, responding to commands to adjust the trajectory with accuracy. However, the evolution of this weapon doesn't halt here. It can also be added with a laser-guided kit in the front, elevating its intelligence quotient further. To increase the range, they even added wings called the Glide Bombs or JDAM Extended Range or JDAM ER as they called it. The wing kit will triple the range of JDAM from 15 miles to 46 miles, which translates to around 75 kilometers for the same accuracy. Let's take a look at how this JDAM works. Step 1. Target coordinates can be loaded into this aircraft before takeoff and manually altered by the aircrew in flight prior to weapon release. Step 2. When dropped, the JDAM switches to its internal guidance or GPS. In simpler terms, it uses military-grade satellites to pinpoint its exact locations if needed, and provides real all-weather capability since GPS is not affected by rain, clouds, fog, or smoke, and short doesn't miss its target provided if it's stationary. Step 3. Remember those internal batteries and control gears. The inertial guidance clock keeps track of its position and controls the gears of the fins. So when the JDAM is off course, the fins at the back will redirect or reconfigure according to the GPS or inertial guidance clock to maintain its course. But how does it turn when it does not have wings? Let's take, for example, this guy going skydiving for his vacation. Skydivers will use the surface area of their arms, legs, and torso to change the direction and orientation of their body in the air, just as shown in the animation. My point is, if a human can turn using body surface, now imagine having an aerodynamic weapon that weighs around 500 pounds fallen under gravity. A slight deflection on the tail, considering the amount of air pressure, will help it direct to its designated target. We make original videos from scratch, so please do subscribe and hit the notification bell for more videos.